are. Um, let me break that down for you. So the first, let's start with Hark the Herald Angels Sings. When you get to the third stanza, to the third third chorus, I mean, say, I mean uh, third uh, uh, stanza, yes, and then you get to the chorus of that. Mild he lay mm -hmm. his glory by. Mm -hmm. Born that men no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angel sing, glory to the newborn king. That's a powerful statement right there. That's a powerful, powerful statement right there. And let's explain why. Let's explain why. So when you stop to think about that and say, well, why is that important? Because I know I said there's two songs. One, she just played How Great Thou Art. But also, to this point, um, why is that important? Why does that matter? Why does that fit in? Well, I'm going to explain to you why. I know you're saying, we'll get to the point. Let's get to the why. Let's get to the, the understand. I heard you. You said, come on now. We got things to do. Here it is. Mild delays his glory by. Understanding that Christ is it. He's the done daughter of the done daughters. He's got it all. But for our sake, he took his glory. All the accolades, all the splendor, all the majesty. He took all that. He took that right off. And then what did he do? He put on human flesh. To show and demonstrate to us just how important we are and just how special we are and just how loved we are. That he did something for us that we could not do for ourselves. And what is that? He came to be the means of salvation for us. He came to be that. That's what he came to do. And so the greatest form of showing submission and humility. See, you could, you know, you could come and, you know, Jesus could have came just as a man. He could have came just as a man and accomplished everything he was going to do. He could have done that. could have done that. But there's one problem. He would have connected with us, but he only would have connected with a part of us. See, once you became an adult, then you would understand. But see, one of the most powerful statements that you go back and read when you go through your Bible, when you go to Hebrews, Hebrews lays it down. I mean, just knocks it up. It says that we have a high priest who sympathizes with us because he understands our plight. He understands our plight. How do you understand something unless you've went through it? That's why mildly he lay his glory by. Born. Born. In other words, that means Jesus knows the whole process from beginning to to him. That is why he is our kinsman redeemer. That is why he is our high priest. That is why our first advent candle was what? Hope. Mm -hmm. He came to be our hope. He is the hope that our faith rests upon. See, if it's not for Jesus, we have nothing. We are just, we're done. Why? Because we've sinned. We've, we've committed the greatest atrocity against God that we can do. But aren't you glad that Jesus loved us so much, that God loved us so much, that he gives us a means to be forgiven? That we can be in a right relationship with him. That's powerful. That's amazing. That's dynamic. That is hmm, great, isn't it? Amen. Isn't that great? Amen. And that, how great thou art. Hey, when we stop and we think about all that we see, I see, you know, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. You know the significance of that song? When the writer was writing that, he was literally going through a storm at that time. Not just in his life, but an actual storm. Come to find out there was an F5 tornado that's happening far away from where he is, but as you go out, he's, he's a distance away from there. But as he's riding this one, 
You look out through your window and you see the lightning just lighting up a cloud. Mm -hmm. You hear the rolling thunder. It means it's a powerful storm because, you know, there ain't nothing there at that mm -hmm. time. So you got open space where he is. And you know when you're out in, in space and you hear thunder, it's totally different from when you hear it in your house. Right. And when you're in your house, you know, it, it, can, it can rumble your house a little bit. Mm -hmm. But imagine just being out in the open and then you see the lightning and then you hear the thunder. And it just always oh, shakes you to your core. Mm -hmm. I hear the rolling thunder. Means you're hearing it. It's just gone. Thy power throughout the universe display. You know how. You know. Ain't nothing like thunder. You can't mistake that for anything else. It's thunder. Thunder is it. Thunder and lightning. When you see it and you hear it, you know it's distinct. It's the same thing about God. You cannot lie about God. You cannot lie about who he is. And you understand that there's something that you have with him that's totally different than anything else. Our second Advent candle is peace. Our second Advent candle is peace. And do you know why we have peace? you know why we have peace? Do you know why peace is even needed? Because we stated it earlier. We sin against God which then put us at war with him. We've been at war. Do you realize that every time we sin, we are literally drawing a line in the sand and telling God, bring everything you want against me because it's me against you. And guess who's going to win every single time? God is. Why? Because he's God. Do you know the one who rules your breaths? He does. Do you know the one who knows your days? He does. Do you know the one who made you? He does. He did. Do you know who knows all the hairs on your head? He does. He does. Do you know who knows every beat of your heart? He does. Are you starting to put together what I'm putting down? It don't matter how bad you think you are. You're not bad at all when you put it in correlation to who God is. He's greater than you. And in other words, us going up and up, up against God and sinning against him, that's us spitting in God's face, slapping him in the face, that's us punching him in the face and say, do something then. You don't think he won't? Aren't you glad that God is not like us? He's patient. Mm -hmm. He's kind. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that God has a passive disposition. Now look, it don't mean he not going to do something. Trust me, if you provoke him enough, he going to move. But see, God is so gracious to us that he literally gives us the opportunity to ask for forgiveness so we can be put in a right relationship with him. That's something that does not happen anywhere else. But we have peace with him. We're going to talk about that today. Let's pray and we'll get started. Father God, thank you for another wonderful day and thank you for the many blessings. And Father, as we come here today, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. Thank you for the way that you move. Thank you, dear Father, for the way that you love us. Father, Lord, as we come looking at your word, dear Father, Lord, I just pray, God, that, Lord, you would allow your word to flow, Father, from your, your word, dear Father, into our hearts so that we can greatly and truly, fully understand Lord, why we have peace with you. And why, Father, Lord, you so desperately want to have a relationship with us. And why you have made every opportunity, dear Father, Lord, known to us and available to us to know you. Father, you gave us your son, Jesus Christ. Father, so that we would know you better and love you more. And so, Father, as we dig into your word, we just ask, Father, that you would move in such a mighty way. Father, I pray, God, Lord, that you remove me right out of the way and that you speak to your people. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. As we pray this in your name, amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Psalm 4. This is the fourth psalm. I know what you're saying. What? The fourth psalm? I think I heard somebody else say, what? There are four psalms? <laughs> 
There's 150, but we're going to the fourth. Don't pull like I did, trying to go to Psalm and go all the way to another book of the Bible, and I gotta go back. <laughs> All right, if you have it, please stand. If you're able to stand, I do know that you are standing with us. Again, that is Psalm chapter 4. If you have it, say amen. Amen. All right. And it reads as follows. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long, O oh you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood, Salah? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry. And do not sin. Meditate within your heart, on your bed, and be still. Salah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who shall show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that the grain and wine increase I will both lie down in peace and sleep for you alone O oh Lord make me dwell in safety may the Lord be praised by the reading of his holy word you may be seated Amen. after we did that 380 20. I did I didn't know I did this one. Wow. That's pretty cool. Keep up with you. I know. See, I'm going to keep up with me. I don't know what I did half the time. I thought I was doing something new. I thought I would hit y'all with something over the head. I didn't. Man, good morning. Good morning. Now, I know many people, when they hear this one, they go like, okay, well, that don't sound like it's peace. But it is. He say, why is it peace? Because it starts with telling us that, guess what? We're at war. You got to understand that there's, there's such things as opposites. You know, they have a saying that says, opposites attract. You ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. yes. You know, opposites attract. Yes. And, and the reason why opposites attract is because, see, there are two different varying things. But the closer that they get together, there's sometimes when you realize that if they were turned the opposite way, they would be the other thing. See, if you think about it, in order to have war, you gotta have peace. Why? Because the means of war is that once war is over, what do you have? Peace. In order to have peace, or in order to, to have peace, sometimes you gotta have war. So if you want war, if you want war, that means that you have to then cause war to happen, right? So the opposite of it is the opposite. So the opposite of war would be peace. The opposite of peace is war. Well, guess what? We were at peace with God. We had peace with him. There was no issue between us and God. I know what you're saying. Come on, Pastor. What you, what you talking about? Well, you know, if you go back to Genesis chapter 3, that tells of the downfall of man. Tells of it. Tells of the heartbreaking tale of how man fell short of where we were supposed to be. But before we get all far up into it, and we get to the boo section of where we are, we gotta get to the first part, so we gotta understand where we are. So um, our title today of our sermon is, There Shall Be Peace. Did you hear that one? Mm -hmm. There shall be peace. That sounds like a parent. There shall be peace in this house. And then five seconds later from the other side, you hear the kid yelling out, no, it won't. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it. So our first point today is this yeah. means war. Mm, Lord, this means war. So 
I want you to understand that from Genesis chapter 3, mm -hmm. verses 1 through 19, detail of the fall of man. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 19, literally details the fall of man. And why, why we go back to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 19? Well, we got to understand this, that today we are looking, this is a point right from, from my notes, that we're talking about the as, aspect of peace. And in order to have peace, you have to what? Have war. But guess what? In the beginning, there was peace. There was peace in the beginning. We had peace. But something or someone wanted to cause there to be a problem between us and God. Mm. You, want, you, want to hear, you want to hear a good verse? You want to hear a good verse? A good verse? I know a lot of people say, yeah, all the verses should be good, and they are. But if you have your Bible, turn to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses. And people go, why is that one of your favorite verses? Because it's just one of those special verses. It has a lot in it. Believe it or not, I had to say it. Say it so much, I say it for myself. You know what I'm Yes, sir. Ooh, there we go. So we get down to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. Listen, listen to what it said. For I am the Lord who brings you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Hey, guess what? I love that verse. I usually quote the second half of that verse because that's why I, that's why I love that verse. I am holy, and I call for you to be holy. That's what God tells us. Well, guess what? In the beginning, we were we were holy. What do you mean we were holy? We were exactly the way that God wanted us to be. We were perfect. Man was perfect. No issues, no problems, no nothing. No canes needed. No, no medications, no nothing, no back issues. We look, we had none of that. Ain't no hip issue. We had none of that. We were good. Yay. Mm, amen. And then, guess what? You gotta go to the book of Revelation. Not now. But you gotta go to the book of Revelation. When you go to Revelation, guess what? In chapter 12, you find out something. You know what? There was this dragon. This mean old nasty dragon that actually was an angel. And the angel's name was Lucifer. And Lucifer is the devil. And guess what? The devil was over there chastising us and tried to cause a coup in heaven. Tried to overthrow heaven. And guess what? Lost. Guess where he got thrown to? Earth. And then guess what happened when he got here to earth? Chapter 3 of Genesis. Because in the garden is who? Adam and Eve. See, man was living the way that we were supposed to. We were doing what we were supposed to do. But see, Satan came and then he had war with God. He had an issue with God. So then he gets to earth. And then he looks on earth and standing over there, just chilling, just walking through the garden one day, are two individuals that are living holy and acceptable in front of God. Remember Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45? I am holy and I call for you to be holy. We were exactly as we're supposed to be. But Satan didn't want that. Why? Because he wanted war with God. And he said this, if I'm going down, I want to take others with me. So what does he do? He goes to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then what does he do? He calls out to Eve. And guess, you know the thing about that? We always get mad at Eve. But you know who was right next to Eve? Mm -hmm. Adam was right there. 
See, the point of the nature is, no matter how we try to explain this away, and trust me, men have always had jokes regarding this. Women have always had jokes around that. But it doesn't matter how you try to joke or how you try to justify it. You still come back to the same thing. And this is the thing. Man committed war against God. What is war? War is three letters, right? W-A-R. Hey, you know what else is three letters? God is, G-O-D, you know what else is? Sin, S-I-N. How do you spell it? Small s, small n, big I in the middle. When you put it together, you start to realize what it means. Small s, small n, big I in the middle of it. Why? Because you might say, wait a minute, that's, that's kind of stupid to spell it. Small s, small n, big I in the middle of it. But think about it. Why is the big I? Because I'm calling the shots. I'm in control. And if you realize it, the I is bigger than the S and the N. Because if you're looking around, ain't nobody there to help you. It's all you. So there's a small S and a small N. You can even capitalize and put them small. But when you look at the I in the middle of it, I'm calling the shots. I'm the big cheese. I'm the one doing what I want to do. And guess who has to stand in front of God and then be held accountable for what he didn't did? I do. Guess who's now held guilty because of what, what's been done? I am. So then when you look at us and God, now you realize God is mad at who? Us. Why are you mad at us? Because we screwed up. You know the most important thing more than anything else? Can I really tell you something? You mind if I really tell you something today? You mind if I really tell you something? You know God loves you. No, no, no. Do you know God loves you? Here's why. In chapter 3, you want to know something very special about this? Even though man sinned against God, do you know what God still did? He still cared for man. We had, you know, we tried to put some leaves together to cover ourselves. Do you know that God made us clothes to cover us? Now, if, if, if that's not a show of love, after we didn't already, we didn't, we didn't sin against him. Mm -hmm. We didn't broke his rules. We didn't broke his laws. We didn't tell him, it's all about me. But yet in the midst of that, he still loves us. Even in the midst of our sin and our wrong, God still loves us. Isn't that something? You know, this morning at Sunday school, Sister uh, Sister Katie, she was coming with, you know, she was coming hot and heavy with all her verses. She hit me with so many of them. I had to duck a couple times. I had to pull that little matrix move. I had to pull that phone. During Sunday school, I did. But she hit me with one of the verses that was so powerful, Romans 5 8. But God demonstrates his love towards us in the fact that why were you still sinners? Christ died for us. Good job, man. It's a powerful statement, isn't it? God demonstrates his love for us. Why does he demonstrate his love? He doesn't have to. You realize that? God doesn't have to demonstrate that, does And we got to understand something. What does war mean? War means that I don't like you. Let's take it. You know, you know something that God tells us not to do? You know, you know what he tells us not to do? I mean, he tells us not to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> But you know one thing he tells us not to do? Not to hate anything. You know the one thing God tells us to hate? Sin. Hate sin with everything, every fiber of your being. You know the one thing about us? We are sinful. Do you realize what that means? God hates sin. You know what people try to do? Listen, folks, listen. See, the world does not understand the full vernacular and the full vocabulary of God's word and the full spectrum of the truth of who God really is. They don't understand the full capacity of who he really is. Why? Because they only know him in part. And they only take the parts that they have heard and the parts that they have heard us say, and they try to take those and make that mean something. So you know what the world says about God? It says that God hates 
us. That's what the world said. Want to know why? Because from our scripture, they know that God hates sin. And then they hear that we are sinful. So because we're sinful, that must mean that God hates us. That's not what that means. It means God hates sin. I think God hates us. He actually loves you. He actually loves you. But what he hates is your sin. Now, if you continue to walk in your sin, you now, you, 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 put enmity between you and God. It means it puts distance, space between you and God. So I'm going to give you a visual representation. And I want, we're going to do, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do, you know, a, a demonstration here. Y'all mind doing a demonstration? Here it is. Be your hands like this. Be your hands like this. This is the way that God wants us to be. This is the way that our relationship should be. We should be like this with God. When you sin, this is where we are. See that distance between your hands? That gulf right there? You know what Jesus said one time? He's telling it in, in, Levit in, not in Leviticus, in Luke chapter 16. When he's telling the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, he tells the, he tells the rich man that fixed between us is a chasm. And the chasm that's fixed between us means that nobody from hell can go to heaven and that nobody from heaven can go to hell. That's already there. You can't go there. So you can't, can't do any of that. Well, guess what? Without Jesus Christ, there is no way for us to be able to get to God because what? There's no way. There's a chasm fixed between us. But Jesus came to be the mender, to be the fixer, to be the one that joins us together. When you do your hands like this, that is what Jesus came to do, to restore us to a right relationship with God. Isn't that awesome? Amen. When you stop and think about that, so we originally had war with God. Christ came to give us peace. And as a sign of his peace, which Christ is, you know the greatest way to show a form of peace? Mm -hmm. To give something. You know, in Japanese culture, the way that they give a, show, a sign of peace is they give you a bonsai tree. And those are very, very small trees. You've seen them before. People, guys, you know, prune on them and, and, and do, you know, there's some beautiful trees, real small trees and everything. But it's a, it's a sign of, of peace. It's a sign of, of acceptance. It's a sign of, of love and things of that nature. That's what they do. All of us have something that we give to somebody when we want to show, you know, that, that thing of that nature. But God gave us something special. He gave us his own son. How do we know he gave his only son? Because you just sung it. Mild he lay in glory by born that men no more may die. Wait, what was he? He was born. Mm -hmm. He was born. That's the greatest showing of humility, of humbleness. A baby is the greatest show of humbleness. Why? Because a baby can't talk. A baby really can't tell you what's going on. It can show you. It can yell his, his head out, poop all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, make a mess of itself. And that's a form of it telling you. But us that are grown adults, and we look at a baby and ask the baby, baby, what's up? And the baby looks at you like, Rrr. Can't tell you nothing else. I'm just looking at you like, <laughs> you saying something. I don't know what that means. But once I learn what it means, I'm going to say something back to you. But you realize that that baby, in order to get its needs met, it needs somebody else to do it. What the greatest show of love and of humbleness is that God gave his son to us to care for him, to watch over him. And here's the thing, and he knows our nature. Listen, you know why Jesus' birth is so special? 
We sing all the Christmas stories. We have these all the Christmas songs. You know, Silent Night. We sing Silent Night. You know, we sing the songs, and the songs are beautiful songs. Beautiful song. Mm -hmm. But then read the story. Read the story of Jesus' birth. It ain't that nice. See, there was a king by the name of King Herod. And King Herod heard that there was a new king. Yeah. And he got jealous. Upset that a new king is going to try to take my spot? Oh, that ain't happening. So what did he do? He said all children, two years and under, David. That's why Jesus had to go. Why did he have to go? Had to go to Bethlehem. Why did he have to go to Bethlehem? Oh, because there was a census done at the same time for him. And the census that was done was done that you had to go to your city. So the head of the household, you had to go to your city, to the city where you were born. And Joseph was of the line of David, and he also came from Bethlehem, which is the city of David. So we had to go back to Bethlehem. Oh, that's why, oh, oh, so you mean to tell me that's why the name of that song is Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Yeah, that's why he's there. That's why he's there. You see how it starts to come together when you realize all these things and you read about all of this? And guess what? The story gets even, gets even more than that. After, they, after the wise men come and they come and they see him, you know what happens after that? See, Herod goes and tells them when they're going, hey, you know, when you go there, come back and tell me where he is. I want to go and, and <laughs> I want to uh, 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 say hello to him. I want to give him all. Um, I want to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to kill Jesus. So then they went and they offered the, the incense, frankincense, and myrrh. They gave that to them. Then you know when they were getting ready to leave, you know what happened mm -hmm. after that? You know, you know what the angel of the Lord told them? Don't you go back and tell her. Don't you go back and tell her. Because he's going to kill, kill Jesus. And then after that, guess what? You start to think about that for a second. But this is, we sing all the Christmas songs, and it has a very happy and very, very cool thing of that nature. But you understand something. Hey, guess what? There's war going on here. There's war going on here. Now, you want to know the real interesting thing about this? I'm, I'm finna, finna really blow your mind on this one. If you read in the book of Revelation, Brother Brian knows we went through this and studied mm -hmm. it. In Revelation, guess what? Hey, there was this lady and the lady who is represented as Israel and Israel is dressed in the sun, the moon and the stars mm -hmm. but do you realize who is outside the camp looking for this lady oh there's this big dragon yeah. you know who that dragon is? oh that's Satan mm -hmm. and you know what Satan wanted to do? kill that child at this story, you're looking at Christmas and you realize that, hey, one of the beautiful things about us is, is that we are giving hope. Mm -hmm. and then you stop and then you hear the fact that, hey, that Satan tried to kill our hope. Mm. He tried to kill our hope. He tried to kill our peace. You know, the other next two Advent parts is joy and love. Mm -hmm. Love and joy, if you want to do them in those aspects. The point of the nature is, he tried to kill the very one who came to be the means of our salvation. Mm -hmm. So now, you know who we really hate? We hate Satan. Why we hate Satan? Because he hates us. He don't like us. He hates us. Why? Because we look like the one that beat him and that is greater than him. You know why we look like him? Go back to 
Genesis chapter 1, 26, 27, mainly 26, where God says, let us make man in our image. We're made by God. Psalm 139 says, before I was formed in my mother's womb, you knew my inward and outward parts. That's how special we are to God. Peace. Is something we're looking for. Peace is something we need. We need peace. Don't you think we need peace? Yes. Aren't you glad we have it in Jesus? Mm -hmm. Hey, so my second point, how do you know peace? Well, Sister Sister Katie laid it out on the line. She, she hit us with the, with the real boomstick verse. Of John 3.16, she quoted it and everything. She remixed it, brought it back, flipped it, turned it around. She gave it to us every way, man. It was good. But John 3.16 lays it out. Do you realize that that actually is one of the heartbeats of the Bible? John 3.16, realize that? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe it in him he should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you realize that that one verse sums up the whole Bible? It does. It does. It sums it up. It literally goes from Genesis to Revelation. Literally does. That one verse. You say, how? How does it go through? Break it up. Break it up in parts. Trust me, I can preach on it. I can break it up. I think I will. Not right now. <laughs> but the point of it, uh, I heard Abby, I said, praise the Lord. He ain't going to let us do that. But no, it's one of those where when you stop and you think about it, that verse allows you to be able to truly see God in the full capacity and dynamic of who he is. And it also shows his nature, his love, his character. It also shows how valuable, how precious, how really, truly, truly precious and special we are to God. So it shows. God demonstrates his love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow. Mm -hmm. You start to put this together and start looking at how the, how the Roman road works. But also, when you look at the full capacity of God's word, and you start putting these verses together, and then you really realize that John 3.16 should not perish but have everlasting life. That whosoever should believe it in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hey, you want to know the greatest part of that when we get to the end? Which verse really sums it up? Romans 10.13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome when you stop to think about God's word, how full and dynamic it comes together? In order for us to truly know God and to know peace, we got to know who Jesus is. Because Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except to me. Hmm. In order to be where Jesus is, and in order to have the right relationship with him, in order to truly know peace, you got to know Jesus. So in other words, what do you got to do? I say this every week. Y'all hear me every Sunday when I say it at the end of your sermon. Choose Jesus today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for another wonderful day and thank you for the many blessings. And Father, as we come here today, dear God, we understand and know your peace. And Father, we just ask Jesus that you would just move in a mighty way. Father, that you would bless us guide us, use us for your purpose. Father, Lord, thank you for the gift that you gave us through your son, but also, the Father, that you gave us salvation. Something, dear Father, Lord, that we couldn't get on our own. But, Father, you made a way when there seemed to be no way. And so, Father, right now, we just ask, Lord, that if there's someone today that needs to know you, and that needs to place their faith and trust in you, that God can do it today. Father, we just thank you. We love you. We praise you. We just give you all all that we have. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.